I'm I'm bummed. I am bummed with this loss. It's eating at me. This loss, I'm actually really disappointed as the Phillies lose to the Mets 7-6 to in 11 innings. It goes to extras, and this game, it, it pissed me off. I don't know how to explain it. I know it's a long season, but I thought we had opportunities to win this game. This is going to be a team that we're going to be battling with for the NL East pretty much all season long. When you have opportunities, you need to cash in. Now, the Mets had chances they didn't cash in on either, but but at the end of the day, they did. They crossed home plate late in extras, and we couldn't find a way to match them in the bottom of the 11th. So, to start this off, Aaron Nola, terrible performance once again. It was Nola versus Thor. Thor had nine strikeouts, but I also thought he struggled. He allowed five earned runs. Nola allowed five earned runs. It was tough weather. I understand that. I thought both pitchers did not perform very well, but Nola was worse in my opinion. He only goes four innings. He allowed seven hits, five earned runs, walked three, six strikeouts in, in 83 pitches, and his command is not there. After the game, Gabe Kapler to the media actually firing back to guys like Jim Salisbury and other reporters around the Phillies because they were asking questions on what is wrong with Aaron Nola. Is there anything physical? And, and Gabe Kapler gave some attitude back in the tone of his voice because he's frustrated as well, one, with the loss, and two, there really isn't anything physically wrong with Aaron Nola. The guy's just missing his command. Nola doesn't have heat. He doesn't have high 90 stuff. The reason he was so dominant last year was location, and he's missing that insanely, and he doesn't have his command and it's a problem so another terrible start for Aaron Nola and it's just it's it's not good enough for our number one guy you got to be harsh you got to be very critical of your guys and our number one pitcher is not up to speed right now Thor on the other hand he went five he allowed nine hits five earned runs as well three walks with, with the nine K's and threw over a hundred pitches but both pitchers are struggling today and one thing that you can take a positive in this outside of the pitching is, you know, the Phillies lineup battled back. So we go down in the top of the third, 3 nothing. While we respond with Bryce Harper and JT Real Mucho coming up with big hits, bang, it's tied 3-3. In the top of the fourth, they score two runs, 5-3. Well, in the bottom of the fourth, Michael Franco hits a two-run bomb in that wind, in that environment, 5-5. We tie the game right back up. But they respond within the sixth inning. We put Alvarez in who hangs a pitch. It gets destroyed for a solo shot. They take the lead back. The Phillies continue, continue, continue to fight. In the eighth, here's an opportunity where we should have won the baseball game. And bases juiced, they walk in a run. So it's tied 6-6. Six to six. With bases juiced, two outs, Bryce Harper, he misses it com- completely. He just he, he misses it. And pop up infield. Pop up infield. Bases juice, two outs. Bryce Harper, eighth inning. Take the lead. Pop up. Infield. Uh, uh, okay, I, I, I guess I guess that happens. Tenth inning. Scotty Kingery gets on. Andrew McCutcheon brings him over to third. Two outs. Gene Segura. I thought he handled the at-bat pretty decently in the beginning of the at-bat. Working the count. Kind of playing around with the strike zone. Some close calls. But strikes out on a horrendous, horrendous swing. A horrible attempt. Strikes out. Left the guy on third base in extra innings to walk it off. Two chances. Two chances. And I know the Mets had chances throughout the game, but good teams, they execute when other teams put you in positions to win. You take advantage when you have a chance to win a ball game. And we let two slide. Two. So that's on us. That's why I'm pissed, because we had the chances. I know Nola was bad. I get that. You need better starts from your from your number one guy. But when you, when the Philadelphia Phillies have a chance with bases juiced in the eighth inning to take control of the game and you don't execute, I'm bothered. But it happens. Okay. You get a second opportunity. How many times do you get two chances like that? We leave Scott Kingery on third base because of a horrendous at-bat. What ends up happening? 11th inning. We get sloppy. Reese Hoskins should have been able to, it was a hard hit, but he should be able to manage a ground ball. He doesn't. Cesar Hernandez tries to pick the ball up and throw it. He threw it into the ground five feet in front of him, and it rolled. The Phillies defensively, it's starting to remind me at times like last year. We are garbage defensively. Reese Hoskins, bad defensively at first base. 
He also went 0 of 5 from the plate. We had two errors today. And we lose a game in extra innings. I'm upset because we had a chance to win this. And this is a good Mets team. You got to give them credit. We're going to be giving dog fights all year long with them like this. But good teams find the way to win these. They were down, they battle back. Give them credit. They were down, they battle back. Give them credit. They go down, they battle back. But had guys on to win the game. And failed. And failed. Once I saw Diaz come in, I said, okay, okay, game over. Game over. Once I saw Diaz come on the bump, and he was throwing his heat, and no one could touch it, and it was it was just, it was all she wrote. All she wrote. So as for our bullpen, outside of Alvarez, you had Anderson come in and do a good job. Morgan came in and did a good job. When Nishak came in, things got a little bit sloppier, but... You know, you didn't have the support defensively, and, and we lose the ball game. But this game irritates me. It really does. It bothers me. I wanted to win. I wanted to win so bad. This is a good Mets team, and we we had base runners on to knock in. And it, and it eats at me. It eats at me. I can't believe I'm this upset considering the big Sixers W. The Sixers win a playoff game where they look like crap in Game 1. They destroy the Brooklyn Nets in Game 2, yet afterwards... I'm disgusted with the way the Phillies lost. I know it's one game of 162. I can say that for all of them. But my job is to talk about each individual game. And I'm bothered by this. Because I see sloppy defense. I see sloppy plays. I see times where we need to execute to win a baseball game. And we don't execute. Both teams had 12 hits. This is how it's going to be against this division. This is how it's going to be against these teams. This is how it's going to be against good teams. Only one can come up on top. But the Phillies should have been on top. The other team walks in the tying run in the 8th inning. And you don't take advantage of that mistake? The top teams in this league crush the ball in that situation. And with Bryce Harper up. Oh. Oh. That was it. That was the moment where you got to slap a ball into play. You have to. And to think in the 10th, it was there again. See, I know a lot of Phillies fans might look at this and say, well, Aaron Nola has to be better. You need to get more out of your ace. That's where we lost this game. And that's fair criticism. You're not wrong. But even with him playing that poorly, I still take a look at this at the end of it and say, I thought there were times where we needed to put the ball in a spot to win a baseball game. We had to hit the baseball in the gap through the infield somewhere to win a baseball game. Two times. In two clutch moments, we had chances. And we failed. And we failed. So as poor as Nola was, and he needs to figure it out. He needs to find his command. He needs to find his rhythm. There's no doubt about it. At this time, there's been enough starts where now I'm saying, okay, what's happening? Now my concern level is rising because it's been more and more and more starts. But at the end of this, did we not have a winnable baseball game in our hands? We got to give credit to the Mets. And listen, their fan base too, cheering uh, cheering loud. Cheering loud in that ballpark. Nothing like hearing Mets fans take over the Citizens Bank Park. Now, I can counter that by saying, well, we had a Sixers playoff game to worry about. Taking down the Brooklyn Nets. If, if you're Mets fans or even Brooklyn Nets fans or not, or Knicks fans, whatever they want to say they are. There's so many damn teams in there, they can just pick and choose. But they came in the ballpark, and I heard them loudly. And I can't deny that. They had their chance loud at the end of the ball game. So, I mean, that's that's how I see this game. You can take positives that we battled back, but I don't know if I take any positives out of this. I thought this was a winnable baseball game that we let slip away. Two teams, both having opportunities. No one taking advantage, no one taking advantage, no one taking advantage until the Mets did because of some sloppy defensive plays by the Phillies there. And uh, that that's how it goes sometimes, so... Hey, listen, we got Nick Pavetta on the bump tomorrow to try and put us in a position to win a series. So tomorrow is so important. Hopefully the weather's a little bit nicer 
That'll help the baseball players out there be able to perform a little bit. I was surprised we saw that many home runs with how windy it really was, but there were balls leaving the ballpark. There definitely was. All right, so hit that thumbs up button. Let me know your comments down below on NOLA on this game, on, on the the lack of execution. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.